Okay, this is a reaction video. This is from uh, Passport 2. I've done a, quite a few of their videos. And this is things that shocked me in the U.S. after living in Germany, reverse culture shock. And I, I'm kind of curious about this one. This is a brand new video that he just put up there. And I'm kind of curious to see what, what he's going to say about this. Uh, let's see. Let's see, what, see where this goes. We hadn't left Germany and gone to the U.S. in two years. So... What was it like when we finally did? And Now, the closest thing I can do to that as far as not being in the United States... Now, my first memories are not of living in the United States. My first memories are living in Bermuda. Bermuda is about 700 miles off the eastern seaboard of the United States, and that's where um, my first memories are. My, uh, I, my brother and I were both born in Long Beach, California. My sister was born in Annapolis, Maryland, uh, a couple, two years after I was born. And... Um, I think it's 72, <clears throat> my father was, state was in the Navy, was stationed in Bermuda. So I didn't have a uh, idea of what it was like to live in the United States before I left, because my first memories are of Bermuda, and then I, we, we made back to, to the United States in 76. But let me see what, 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 what this, because uh, if, if, you, if you've lived in the United States, you have the United, you, you understand the United States, the way things are done. And then you travel around the world like they did and then set yourself up in Germany and haven't been back in two years. I think some things might have changed, but I don't know how much. Which country have you ended up preferring? You know, I, I, they ask that question, like, uh, the, like in Bermuda or the United States, I'll always take the United States. And if I, I, I can't speak for living abroad or moving abroad because I don't think I'll ever do it. But, uh, well, I, that, you know, you will probably have a disclaimer here about, you know, not one way is better than the other and all that good stuff. But we'll see. Hey, guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. We've been living in Germany for about three and a half years now, and we hadn't gone back to the US for two years. I've of course been making videos about our experiences as Americans living in Germany and the things that surprise or shock us about the differences in culture and way of life here in Germany. But after two years of living strictly in Germany and not stepping foot in the US, I think I hadn't realized just how normal life in Germany has started to become for us. Or I've made some videos about things based and to be to, to their credit, what they've done is they've immersed themselves in the culture, and it's so, so you know in, in a lot of ways they're probably more German than they are American, and they start seeing things from a German point of view, and that that that's I think a, a very important uh, uh, thing to say whenever I, I hear these things. You know, th these things may shock you, but you've immersed yourself in the culture, and that's what you need to do. Based on our experiences in the U.S., but had comments from Americans telling me that. Actually, some of those things have changed in the U.S. since we left, and those things that we were used to in the U.S. aren't really a thing anymore. All this to say, when we went back to the U.S. this Christmas and spent a month traveling across the southern United States and then up to the northwestern <coughs> of the United States, we were shocked at just how many things shocked us into wild reverse culture shock moments. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today in our video. Pop dear Bach for our reverse culture shock. So as soon as Aubrey and I landed in the US, we started a shared note on our phones. So that's the list that I'm gonna be reading from and some of this will be just simply things that will be rapid fire given and I'll briefly mention it and then some things will require a little bit more of an explanation. So one of the very first things that we noticed as soon as we got off the plane and we started driving around is that storage units are everywhere. So this is something that you do see in Germany and actually it was kind of funny because whenever we saw these in the US we thought wow there's tons of these and I don't know if I can think of a single one in Germany that we've ever seen. There are quite a few storage units but I don't think I paid much attention to them. Because I do think that it is kind of a stereotype in Germany that Germans don't keep as much I guess extra junk and if they don't need it they get rid of it whereas Americans kind of hoard things sometimes more. Than That's my grandmother my, on my mom's side when, when, when she passed away there was stuff uh, that she had from the 50s that had I couldn't couldn't understand why she had them some of these some of, she had batteries from the 50s uh, that were unopened uh, there were a bunch of stuff there that that, that, that was just clutter that, that, that didn't need to be there 
but maybe but I guess they meant something to her. I, I don't know. I can't, couldn't speak to it. But uh, uh, yeah, my uh, you know I don't like to hoard a lot of things. At least I don't. I used I used to, but I don't not so much anymore. The Germans do, but as soon as we got off the plane in Germany and we started driving home, we actually did drive by a couple of storage unit businesses. So they do exist in Germany, but just not nearly at the extent that they are in the U.S. We have on our list written literally just toilets. And Aubrey wrote that one, and ever since she mentioned it to me, I now, like, I started noticing it more and more, and I realized what she was talking about. So we know that in Germany, you typically will have two buttons, a smaller one and a bigger one. Now, to be fair, I actually do have that kind of a toilet with two buttons, a smaller one with the uh, uh, two buttons. I don't have, I, I, the one upstairs has the flusher, but the uh, one I have down here, which is over there, is, uh, has the two buttons one for the size of flush, for the size of job that you did in the toilet. And in the US, you would typically just have a lever that we've gotten used to on German toilets pushing a button. And so whenever we would get done using the toilet in the US, we would like reach over for either the tank or the wall just out of kind of like instinct and try to like push a button, but there was no button. And then we had to... Why are you telling us this? I mean, I, I get it's a culture shock or something like that, but why do we need to know about your toilet habits or the difference between the toilets? You did that in another video. Remember that on the side of the tank was a lever. So it was like a different hand action than what we normally would do. So it's just kind of a funny little thing that we didn't realize, wow, after two years of doing that, we've really got muscle memory of buttons rather than pushing down a flusher. <laughs> Oh gosh, this next one is something that really surprised Aubrey and I how like much we have gotten Germanized in this. And that is one, the amount of carpet in American homes and German homes we've really gotten used to like no carpet, large rugs and lots of rugs. But that's not the more. I'm starting to think I'm more German than I am American because I've got, I don't, I don't have a lot of carpet. I have a lot of rugs. So maybe I maybe maybe I'm more German than I am than I thought I was. A shocking thing, what we are more shocked by is of course the classic Americans wearing shoes inside their homes. We've really gotten used to not wearing shoes inside of our house because we don't want our baby down on the floor where we've stepped in gross things outside or in public bathrooms and then track that in our house. But also we've gotten used to And to be fair, I take my shoes off again, I that's the thing. I take my shoes off when I get into the house. I don't walk around now, if I'm at somebody else's house, like my sister's, for example, she generally makes you take off your shoes, but sometimes, but not so much anymore. So I guess when you come to my house, you know, when I come home, home I usually take off my shoes. So maybe I'm, I'm again, I'm more German than I thought I was. So that just when we go to a German's home, is taking our shoes off. And it was so surprising how much we were noticing and getting kind of grossed out by all of our family and friends wearing shoes inside their homes. No offense, family and friends, but especially on carpet for some reason. I know like on hard floors, we can mop and clean them pretty easily, but carpet, just thinking like more you just vacuum, but you're still getting that stuff down in the grains of the carpet. So she, seeing shoes on that was really just, oh, couldn't believe. Not if you get a Dyson vacuum cleaner, you're not gonna have that problem. Those are very, very good, but no, I. Again, I don't know that I would call it gross. I mean, I, it, it is what, I mean, look, it, 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 it's, it's one of the differences between Americans and Germans. When you go to a house, you generally keep your shoes on, okay? Uh, I, I, I know some people who consider it to be rude to take their shoes off in a house. They, they do. Uh, they, 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 they think it's, you, should, you should keep your shoes on and not walk around with your, in your socks or walk around with your bare feet. It's just, you know, different difference. Difference of opinion. That's <laughs> how Germanized we got with that while we've been here for the last two years. So we spent, of course, a lot of time driving around in the US. And with that, of course, we noticed some driving differences. One being something that we've talked about in so many videos and Germans are adamant that they have it right. And I'm adamant that they don't have it right. And that is the stoplight placement. It was amazing. Again, driving and being able to comfortably sit and just look across the intersection and see the light just right there in perfect view rather than being right directly over your head like in Germany. Yeah, German. I, 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 granted, I didn't drive in Germany, but yeah, I understand exactly what he's talking about there. I did see that when I was in Germany. It, it, it The way it's done in Germany is, is it, well, I'm not going to, I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I like my German uh, uh, subscribers, but and no, you know how I feel. Oh, Germans always like to say, well, you can look to the right and you'll see the light on the pole that's more at a comfortable eye level. But 
What's the purpose of having those extra lights when you have those up there? Just put those across the way and you don't have to have the extra money spent on the lights down on the side. However, with the stoplights, there is something that I swear that the Germans do better, and that is the traffic light sequence. I love the red going to yellow and then green. Letting that is better. I'll, 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 give, I'll give the Germans that. That, that, that I like. That's something that would be nice in the United States. You know, to kind of get ready that the light is about to turn green, whereas in the U.S. it's just red and then surprise green. I feel like if Germany and the U.S. would come together on this, we could have the most superior light system in the world, but unfortunately, we both are making our mistakes there. So whenever we went and visited our first family members, we got a hotel room, but the hotel gave us our room keys and they told us that we were on the second floor. And we got in the- Okay, I already know where we're going. You're going to the elevator and in Germany, the first floor is the second floor in the United States. I, I get it. Elevator, then Aubrey and I both looked at each other while we were trying to figure out what button to push to go up. And it was almost like shocking how confused we were on which <laughs> button to push because we didn't know what floor to go to. And yeah, because like in, in Germany, the uh, uh, first floor is the floor up, the, the next one up. If you go to the elevator, the first floor is... Uh, if you're in the lobby, the next floor is the first floor, then the second floor, and the third floor. In the United States, the second floor is the floor up from where the lobby is. So that's, I can understand that. In the U.S., the ground floor is the first floor. And then the next floor is the second floor. In Germany, the ground floor is the ground floor and the next floor would be the first floor so we've gotten really used to now when we're told in germany that we're on the second floor to go not from the ground floor not on the next floor but the next floor that the u.s would call the third floor so whenever we were in the u.s our first time to be told again the old way that we used to know and they told us to go to the second floor. We wanted to go to what I guess we would think is the third floor, but then we had to remember that it's actually one floor down, but simply just out of practice of doing this for the last three. You know, <clears throat> it really shouldn't be that difficult to figure it out, but I can certainly understand why it would be because you're used to doing one thing a specific way and now you're doing it a different way, okay? You have become acclimated to how things are done and you start seeing things that way. It's just the way things happen. You know, and when you're in the United States, you look at things. You look, we, we did not, we did, I did not have that problem. We weren't on the first floor, second floor, whatever. And I believe when I was in Germany, we were on like the third or fourth floor. And that's what they said. And that's what we pushed. And that's where we went. But um, yeah, I, you've become acclimated. They do things a different way than we do in the United States. And yeah, I can understand that. In a half years, but two years uninterrupted, we had a hard time figuring out which floor to go to in the hotel. And speaking of the now, I think I think I know we could, I think you know where he's going with this, but I'm gonna let him do it before I jump in. Hotel. Something that I just just found hilarious to see again was a room in the hallway that was labeled ice. This is something that you won't see in Germany, but in U.S. hotels, you typically have a room where you have a ice machine so that anybody on that floor can always have access to free ice anytime they want it. And you Yeah, one, one of the first things I do when I get to a hotel, and this is just natural, uh, this is just by, 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 is I go and I get ice and from the ice machine because I want ice in my drink. Uh, but when I got served uh, drinks in Germany, uh, they came neat. They didn't come with ice in them. And it you know, didn't matter where I went. They just didn't come with ice. And But yeah, the United States, ice is a big thing. Usually in your hotel room, you'll have a bucket that is your ice bucket that you'll carry down there that the hotel provides, and then you can have ice in your room. German hotels do not have that because people don't put ice in drinks very often. That was kind of surprising to us. <laughs> When we were in the U.S., we were reminded of kind of a quirk, I guess, of the U.S., and that is how they have not adopted the international standard street signs in Europe in particular, and Germany, of course, is one of these. Yeah, I, I, I saw those, and I was like, what the hell is all this? Well, I mean, good God. I mean, do you really need all this stuff? 
They've adopted a very standardized set of street signs and those are dominated by icons, which of course makes sense because you have a lot of people that don't speak German that are coming through Germany. And so if you have street signs that are just in German, you know, what are they supposed to do, especially when you're driving? So that was one thing that kind of shocked us about the US is that they haven't adopted these street signs that we well, keep in mind where Germany is located. I mean, I I, I guess I can understand. I, when I saw it, I didn't make any sense. But now it kind of does. I mean, if you look at Germany, okay, I mean, you border the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Switzerland, uh, Czech Republic, I believe, and one other, uh, an Austria. Okay, so, and not every, you know, not all those countries speak the same. So that would make sense. But the United States, you've got Mexico, oh, sorry, Canada and Mexico. Below, Canada above, Mexico below, and uh, so so you really don't need all that stuff in the United States. We've gotten really used to seeing, but also how many American street signs are just English text and no icons. When you're driving down a road going like 45 miles an hour and you're passing by a sign and you have to read multiple lines of English and your English isn't like super good to be able to read it like quickly, it almost makes no sense. We don't have I. Yeah, but again, like I said, you're in the United States, you know, most people in the United States speak English. It's a big country. Germany is a big country, but the United States is a huge country, okay, compared to Germany, to, to, to be honest. And most people speak English. So and you know, you're driving 45 miles an hour. You're not reading every single sign that's going on there. Okay. So, but, but I understand where he's coming from. Icons so that people can just look at it and just know what they need to know. That signage in the U.S. is very helpful for one demographic. And that is English speakers. True. But like I said, we're not, we don't have all those countries and all those different languages bordering us. So we don't need different, you know, languages for other people. Another house difference is the light switches. Most of our light switches that we have seen in Germany are like these square paddles. Whenever we were in the US where we have a little peg that comes out and it's a switch is I kind of do this like hand thing where I like either fold in my index finger or I spread my fingers and I take the peg on my middle finger and flick it up or I'll slap it down with my middle finger whenever I walk in a room. Whenever we came back to Germany, even after only being in the US for a month, I was walking into rooms and I was noticing that I was sticking my hand out and like doing that motion and sticking my middle finger out to flick it or flip it down. And I was just whiffing, you know, just smacking the air and nothing was happening. And it was like, oh yeah, the switches here are paddles that you have to like push. So I've had to like retrain, kind of like slap the paddle up or down, which is a you know, I, I don't know that I really have anything to say about this. That, that I, I can understand where he's coming from. Yeah, you you know, things are done differently. It's just almost like the same with plugs, too. Because I have a, a international adapter for my plug. We have different... And so I can understand where he's coming from there. This is, this is just one of those little knickknacks that, that we have here versus over there. Weird, like, just how quickly my body, I guess, the muscle memory just switches to one. <laughs> Switch. <laughs> One thing that I actually would be interested in you guys letting me know in the comments, do you see gated communities in Germany? I mean, I see, of course, driveways that might have a gate to their driveway, but I haven't seen very many like living communities where to be able to access all of the houses in it. You see those uh, um, in, in a lot of places in the United States. I don't, there's not, not one really close by to me. But yeah, gated communities where you have a gate, you have to, you, there's sometimes there's a security guard out there before you can, you're allowed to drive in there. Where you have a gate. And that was one thing that we noticed in the U.S. is that is a very desired neighborhood. And doesn't this... Yeah, sometimes you have a guard there or sometimes you just have to, you know, punch in a code to get in there. Necessarily have to be in a sketchy area. It can be in a really nice part of town. It's almost like a status symbol. So do these exist in Germany? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> And in terms of something else that we haven't remembered is such a desired thing in the U.S. are called Coles de Sacs. Coles de... Cul-de-sacs. Uh, I, 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 yeah. A sac. A cul-de-sac is basically if, you, if you're if you driving in, in a subdivision where a bunch of houses are and uh, you turn into one, it goes and then it just circles around and then that's how you get in. You, if you go in... It's not like you can go straight on, right on through. It just has like a circular motion, like a circular uh, area, and 
you know, you have houses in each one of these areas. And they, but if you, if you need to turn around, you go in and you just go around and come back out. It's either coal de sac or coal de sac. But what these are, it's basically like a dead end road. There's a circle at the end of the dead end where people can like turn around and be able to drive out. And this is like the most desired location if you're gonna live in an American neighborhood because you don't have all of the traffic from the main roads inside of a neighborhood. Or You'd be surprised how much traffic you'll get in a cul de sac, but, but he's right, not, a, not, a, not as much as if you were lived on the street where cars are going, you know, Dri or driving by on a regular basis. Inside of a town, and so it's usually like a very safe place for kids to be able to play. The houses around them can kind of watch over them if they need to. And it's also typically a quieter place since you don't have that traffic. But in Germany, you don't have these, like at all. I don't think I've ever seen a cold de sac. <laughs> We have on this list written fire hydrant, something we've talked about before. Just in Germany, you don't really see any fire hydrants because a lot of them are actually underground, whereas in the US, they're all above ground and you see them everywhere. However, in Germany, even when you do see one above ground, it looks different than an American fire hydrant. That's pretty much it. Fire hydrants, interesting. <coughs> One of the classic things you always hear foreigners talking about in Germany is how pretty much everything is shut down on Sundays. In particular, the most famous one of all, grocery stores. Grocery. Yeah, in the United States, nothing shuts down on Sundays. For all intents, there's very few things that... There's a fast food restaurant called Chick-fil-A, which shuts down on... Uh, which is a very popular fast food place. We make great chicken sandwiches and a lot... If, if you... On, uh, at, at evenings... You'll have long, long lines to get to a to a, uh, a Chick Fil A, but they close down on Sundays, and that that's 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 unusual for the United States. Grocery stores are one of the main things that Americans go to on Sundays. A lot of times, that's when they get their grocery shopping done for the week. So that was kind of shocking. There was one moment where we were at. Now I do my grocery shopping on Fridays, but a lot of people will do their grocery shopping on Saturday morning or Sunday morning. They'll, they'll go to church and then uh, maybe do the grocery shopping after church and, and bring their, 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 their food home for the week. Some of our family's house on a Saturday and we were sitting around talking and they were talking about food they needed to get for a little party they were gonna be throwing. And they said, oh, well, we'll just go tomorrow. And both Aubrey and I initially, like our first- Probably said, but the groceries, they're closed tomorrow. She actually was like, oh, tomorrow's Sunday. As if to say like, oh, it's closed. We sh should go tonight or we should go Monday. But then we were like, halfway through saying, oh, tomorrow's, we're in America. You can go on Sunday. <laughs> and speaking of the grocery store, I did go to a couple different grocery stores with some of my family. I really was shocked by, whenever I got to the checkout line, the speed of things getting done there. So this is- Well, here's another thing. I, I don't know if they have these in Germany, but you can literally go do your grocery shopping and then go to a self-serve where you scan your own groceries and then pay for it there and then leave. Okay, you don't have to wait for uh, Joe Cash, Joe or Jenny Cash register to run it right out for you. You can go ring it out yourself and you can do it at whatever pace you want. <laughs> this is very classic, again, something you always see foreigners talking about in Germany, is how in German grocery stores, they just go like, zack, 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 just scanning your items, just throwing it down to the end, and you bag yourself, and so you gotta either throw it in the basket real quick, and you'll just bag it later, because you don't have time to keep up with them and bagging it right then, or you have your bags ready to go, and you just throw it in, and you know what you're doing quickly. But in the U.S., man, no joke, I had completely forgotten about what this experience is like, and the checkout guy was just like, so, beep. What are you guys going to be doing today? Beep. Oh, is this what you're having for dinner? Beep. In the U.S., you almost always have someone bag your groceries for you or the checkout person will check out your goods and then bag it. Yeah, if you're, if you're in the United States and you go through the checkout line like that, they will not, you know, throw your, throw your stuff down there. They will start bagging instantly and move it down. Okay, and they will not help the next person until all your stuff is bagged and and you're on your way before they start the next one. And that's expected. Okay. Furthermore, sometimes they'll have a, somebody else on the end there if it, and they will bag it for you and they will put it up and they will put it in your cart so that when you're done paying, you can just take it in as you, as you go. Okay, that's that's how things or like I said before, you can go to self serve areas where you can scan yourself and then go.
<coughs> or directly back things as they're checking things out. But then I realized there's nobody here. This guy's gonna be doing it. We're taking half an hour just to scan our goods. So I went ahead and went around. I grabbed some bags, start throwing it in. And I just realized again, man, I am creepily becoming too German that one, that that was bugging me, that it was going so slow. And two, that I was like, here, let me just grab a bag and I'm just gonna do it myself. I felt like, whoa, I would never have done that before I moved to Germany, but things are happening. Things are changing. <laughs> So this is one thing that I'm not entirely sure if this is a difference or not. I have definitely in my observations over the three years of living here, this is a difference. But I was surprised at how many lawn crews that we saw in the US, but I don't think I've ever seen a single lawn crew in Germany. So what I mean by that is a lot of Americans will hire big crews that will pull up with a big truck and a huge trailer behind them. And they'll be like a team of men that will come out and they'll mow and they'll bag up the grass and they'll rake. I knew a guy who uh, made a, uh, in high school who uh, uh, basically had set up his own company. Even when he was in high school, they would go and he, he and two of his buddies would go and mow the grass uh, at certain ports of the year. And uh, they, they would, I, I, don't, I don't remember how much they charged something like that, but they, in the summer, they would, you know, do maybe you know, three or four um, lawns a day. And uh, really, by the time he finished high school, he probably had quite a quite quite a lot of money uh, for, uh, for for the job that he was doing. I've never seen I, I, you, you see big crews like this at like uh, apartment complexes, but not so much in residential a a areas. You have uh, maybe one or two will do it in residential areas, uh, like like somebody's house your leaves and do all these things for you. Not every American has this, but we were driving around and we saw a ton of those, at least in Texas and in Oklahoma in particular. I wouldn't be surprised if it does exist, but I would like to know, I mean, have you guys ever seen that in Germany? So I have to admit, you guys, there's one thing that has been commented on our videos for the past three years that honestly, like, it Kind of would start to drive me nuts and I would try to defend the US and Aubrey and I had multiple discussions about this when we were in the US, but we were shocked at us driving by construction sites for homes or like apartment buildings and stuff. Seeing the timber frame construction that was being done and thinking like, whoa, that looks like like popsicle sticks. Like, is that gonna blow over? And I hate that because Germans have always been commenting on our videos. I don't understand why Americans build their homes with just wood like they do. I don't know why they don't use concrete or like cinder blocks like we do in Germany. It's just so much more. Well, because then you have to have a, tr you have to have a chat with the Teamsters if you're gonna do something like that. Or stable, it's better. Or they'll say, you know, the US is only doing that because they're cheap and they're making their buildings out of paper mache. I wouldn't feel safe living in those. And I've always tried to defend it saying like, of course you'll feel safe living in them. I've always felt safe living in an American home. But then we really realized, like, I guess subconsciously, living here for three years, not going to the US for two years and seeing construction and just driving around Germany and seeing all of the heavy duty construction that we see, that whenever we were driving around and seeing the construction in the US, it, we, for the first time, I think we're seeing it kind of like a, through a German lens. And You know, you've become Germanized. Now, I look, I, I don't have a single damn problem with wood being used for construction because you know, we don't have a whole lot of uh, weather issues where it affects us, okay? It's just how it's done, and you, you get used to it. Now, can you make an argument that concrete is and, and cement is better? Sure you can, okay? But, look, we, ha we do it our way, you do it your way. We're happy the way we do it, you're happy the way you do it. Doesn't make any sense to you, makes perfect sense to us. That's just how it is. Being like, well, <coughs> that looks flimsy, man. So I don't know where I stand now. I know it's a legitimate means of construction. I don't know necessarily that like, you know, I'm declaring I will always live in a cinder block of concrete home, <laughs> but man, it was shocking how much that kind of scared us seeing that. And suddenly I was like, hey, all you people that have commented that the last three years on our videos, I'm sorry that I kind of got upset. You shouldn't get upset about something like that. That's all right. I mean, like I said, they have their way, you have your way. And you know, like I said, well, nobody's right, and nobody's wrong. At least I don't think they are. So there is one particular grocery item that for some reason just kind of almost confuses us and I would love your guys' insight on why this doesn't exist in Germany, especially with how much coffee Germans drink, but creamer does not 
exist in Germany and we've looked for it. Now I don't drink a whole lot of coffee so I wouldn't know about this. For three years and that's one of the consistent things that Americans that we know kind of complain about the coffee culture in Germany. You can just put milk, I get that, but these creamers that Americans all yeah, B-Y-O-C. If you come to Germany and you're going to drink coffee and you like creamer, bring your own creamer. Okay? I, I, again, I, I get it. You know, not every, you know, I have arguments with, my, with, with one of my friends and I keep telling him not everybody looks at things the same way you do. And, you know, not every country looks at things the same way Americans do. It's just the way it is. It's just not a, not a big thing over in Germany. Yes, milk will work fine. But they, there are products for creamers in coffee, and I know a lot of people that use them. But if, 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 you're, if you're going to Germany, and I guess they don't use creamers in Germany, or it's not something that they normally would do, you know, BYOC, bring your own cream. Always putting their coffee <laughs> religiously if they don't drink it black. You don't get it in Germany. Everybody just puts regular milk in their coffee. And that's something that I'm kind of interested in. Why does that difference exist? But we thoroughly enjoy being in the U.S. again where there's creamers and just really getting them rich creamy cup of coffee was delicious. Yeah. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is... If you could only drink one drink for the rest of your life, what would it be? Thanks so much for watching. I can actually answer that question. If I could only drink one drink for the rest of my life, okay, it would probably be water, because uh, or a specific kind of water. Uh spring water but uh from magnetic springs i have a water thing i need to change over here but that's probably what i'd do now second place would probably be root beer because i love root beer but that's again that's me but i i mean but hey this was great uh passport two things that shocked me in, in the u.s after living in germany reverse culture shock yeah okay there's a few things that are interesting here uh, they do always do a great job so please click like share and subscribe for them and like share and subscribe for scott dover's interesting world and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I appreciate all the comments and I read all of them. And thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day.